What's up guys, I'm Ryan with Ryan Epps Fishing. On today's video, we're gonna be back out on the water today. That is Douglas Lake there behind me. And we're gonna spend a couple evenings uh, out here on Douglas. And that's what you're gonna see in the video today. Uh, fishing has been kind of tough, but hopefully we're gonna be able to put a few fish in the boat for you today. So y'all sit back, relax. Hope y'all enjoy today's video. Boom, baby. That's what I'm talking about. You want to talk about choking a crankbait? Woo! That sucker right there wanted some of that DT. Woo! We're going to have to get the pliers out of that one. fish number one that is not a bad start i will take it so basically what we did was we put in here and i just started running around a little bit i hadn't been here in quite a while kind of getting uh getting a feel for for what the current conditions are ran up there and found a little bit muddier water than i wanted and uh came back down kind of found a found a bluff style bank on it but this bluff style bank right here is a little bit unique. It's got a lot of chunk rock on it and it's got a lot of transitions. It's also got quite a bit of, uh, of wood and lay downs here on it. Never fished this bank before. Uh, but I thought that that would be a good place to start. Pulled out the crankbait. There we go, fish number one. Let's see if we can build off of it, get something going. Yes. All right. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Woo. A little, little iffy there when I saw where that hook was. There's a nice quality. Quality little Douglas bass. Boy, they are chunky. Been back here eating these shad that have moved back in here. I will take that. No complaints from me. Look at all the bait right here. Look at the swirling right there. I'm telling you, man, that sun coming out. I better get another bait on that. They're fixing to go off.
Got him. Do you? That's not a bad fish. No, that's not a bad fish at all. I barely had him. Oh man. Is that a spot? No. That was close. Look at that. One hook. There we go. Hit the lipless bait. Finally found us an area here. Seems to have quite a bit of bait in here. A lot of shad moving back here in this creek. Water's warmed up a little bit, so I'll throw the lipless around, see what we can find. Oh. All right. What did you get it there? Huh? Crank bait. That's a little uh, lipless, little red eye shad. Yeah. I'm surprised ain't nobody else been out. Oh, there he is. There he is. Damn, my bobber again. Oh. Oh, another one. Oh. Alright, there's another. Not no begging. But it is a start. We're gonna get him back in the water. He's bleeding a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> In the final minutes. Ain't no slouch. Ain't no begging neither. Right over there in that pocket. I will take it. I like it. All right, guys, so let's talk about what worked today. Like I say, we were able to get out here and put a couple evenings of fishing together out here on Douglas over the past week, and uh, we caught a few fish. Numbers was not the name of the game, but we caught a few quality fish, some decent fish, and I uh, can't complain about that. Now, we're in the pre-spawn. Uh, now, things should heat up. I expect things to heat up later this month. They always do, but uh, kind of need things to stabilize a little bit. You got fish that are wanting to push up shallow. They really are, but uh, one big thing that, uh, that you know they're having to look into is the fluctuating water levels. Uh, we had all that rain come through, lakes came way up, had a lot of water come in. Well, now we're at the point that TVA is pushing a lot of that water back out. 
All right, so you had it come way up and now you've got it going way back down. Uh, and then right after that, they're gonna start filling the lakes back up. So you're gonna have them start creeping back up again. So the weather conditions uh, have, have had another bearing on it. Uh, you know, we'll have a 70 degree day, then a 40 degree day and a 30 degree day. And uh, it's just all over the map. And uh, all that doesn't really set up for stable, consistent patterns. It can make that difficult, but you can find fish. And like I say, things will get better here shortly. Uh, but the name of the game, you just got to get out there. You got to cover water. You got to keep slinging, throw those confidence baits. Um, and eventually you will run into some fish. Um, so basically I kind of had two separate patterns, uh, that I toyed around with out there today. Now the first one, and this is the one that we caught our bigger fish on. Uh, the first pattern was targeting these steeper, kind of more typical late winter areas, uh, your, your steeper contour lines, uh, you know, it pushing back into these creeks a little bit and, and, and kind of still out on the main channel. We did catch one out there on the main channel uh, on the more steeper vertical stuff, uh, you know, your steeper chunk rock banks, uh, your bluff wall ends. Um, found a few fish out there. Uh, kind of in a more of a late winter pattern, fish that have not quite started to pull up into that pre-spawn pattern yet. Uh, and what we were targeting those fish with out there was a DT-10, Rapala DT-10. Um, the Rapala DT lineup is a staple for me all year, but especially in the pre-spawn. That bait right there, there's something about it and the, and the wood, uh, you know, it's a wood crankbait. There's something about a Rapala DT series that really shines for me in our area here in the pre-spawn. Now, that color right there is not the color that we were using. That's the color that I had tied on there. I can't show you the other one. Uh, it's still at Douglas. But, let's see if I got one here in a DT6. There you go. That's the same bait in a DT6, same color right there. I believe that is their mustard color. Uh, it's just a typical chartreuse brown back kind of spring crawl pattern. That can be a fantastic color in this stained water in early spring pre-spawn conditions. That color right there really shines in these conditions. So I was targeting those areas. Uh, what I was throwing that bait on right there was uh, just a Bass Pro Shops cranking stick, seven foot six. Uh, had that paired up with a Revo winch, low speed gear ratio, and just crawling that DT-10 down there on those steeper chunk rock banks. And uh, like I say, we caught our two best fish uh, of the trips out there. Was able to pick those fish up on that bait right there. Now, the other pattern that I was in, if you push a little farther back into those creeks and stuff, um, you start to run in. Probably those are male fish that have moved back in there. You know, the male uh, bass are going to push in there first. They're going to push into these spawning areas first. And they typically will go back there, what I've noticed. They'll go back in there and they'll feed pretty heavy on shad or whatever's back there to get ready uh, for the spawn. And uh, there have been some fish moved back there, as we found out. Now... What led me to this is when you go back in those areas, um, there is a lot of bait back there in the back of those creeks. Uh, but if you pay attention, a lot of that bait is very small. All right, very, very small shad that they're back in there keying on. And uh, that kind of took me a little bit to, to get those fish to react to something back there. Couldn't get them to eat a spinner bait. Couldn't get them to eat a regular half ounce sized uh, uh, lipless crank bait. Uh, couldn't get him to eat a crankbait. Uh, so that took a little bit of toying around with, but we finally figured something out today in regards to that. And what I caught all my fish on on the trip this evening was a quarter ounce lipless crankbait. Now that one right there is a Bill Lewis rattle trap, just a standard quarter ounce Bill Lewis rattle trap. Um, I think the deal was downsizing and going to that quarter ounce, you know, nothing more than the fact that it just mimicked what they were back there targeting a whole lot better than the half ounce. Now, uh, I did catch some on the 
Bill Lewis rattle trap. And I also caught, uh, I know I at least caught one of my fish on a quarter ounce Strike King Red Eye Shad. Um, I lost that bait too. So, and that was the only one I had of that. Usually I, I do like to keep some quarter ounce lipless baits in the boat. It's not something that I'm going to be throwing a lot. And it's usually not something that I would ever start out with. But there are situations like we ran into when they're on those tiny shad like that, that uh, going down to a quarter ounce can really pay off for you. Uh, so that's what we did. Uh, just going back there, more of those those flatter 45 and, and you know, even a few banks there, not so steep. Um, so going back there and pushing back into those more uh, typical pre-spawn areas, uh, those, those uh, secondary points leading into spawning pockets and, and even primary points off the creek channel. Uh, leading back into these finger creeks coming into your bigger creek channels is where we were throwing this bait right here. And uh, that seemed to work perfect back there under those conditions. So uh, you can feel it out there on the water. You can see the changes happening around us. Uh, things are going to get good really soon. Uh, you're going to start seeing a lot of fish being caught uh, around there on the internet and, and, and whatever. There's going to be some big fish pull up and uh, there's gonna be a lot of big fish caught. So, we are right on the verge of it, and I cannot wait. Pre-spawn is an exciting time to be out there on the water. I don't care where you're at. That's all I got for y'all today, guys. If you like the videos, make sure you go hit that like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit that notification bell. That's gonna let you all know when I put out all my new videos. If you got any questions or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section down below. And I will get back to y'all with any answers I can give you. Until next time, y'all make some time. Get out there on the water and catch you a few. I'm Ryan Epps. Y'all have a good one.